Time for another edition of The Viking Home Companion. Today's story is The Varangian Guard. You know, things used to be pretty exciting back in my old home village of Skymere, back before they built a new berserker longhouse. Used to be you could walk right out the front door of your long haul into the middle of an axe catching contest, whether you wanted to play or not. And everybody knew that the Arky was the champion axe catcher of the whole village, but a lot of people don't know why. You see, Norseman being, but Norseman is, the Ark would like to go a Viking. The only problem was he wouldn't tell his wife Hildy when he was a going and when he was a coming back. So he'd walk in through the front door of his hall, Hildy, I'm home, and there goes her axe. Now, you know, Berserks aren't known for being all that smart, but he was smart enough to know not to throw it back. He wasn't really worried about whether she could catch it or not, he just didn't want to give her anything else to throw at him. So anyway, like I say, you know, things have been pretty boring lately, so we decided we was going to go a Viking. And we all went down and piled into Half Dan's longboat. And we decided we didn't want to go over to England that year, you know. We've been raiding pretty often, and there aren't a whole lot of Saxon villages left, kind of because we have this habit of burning them down when we're done. And anyway, the ones that are left don't have as many goodies as they used to have anyway either, so we figured we'd give them a break. Give them a chance to restock. Maybe they'd be worth raiding in a year or two. So we decided he was going to go east instead. And we ended up over there in Novgorod. Boy, he was having a really good time too, until the berserks got bored, and some of them started teaching the locals how to play axe catching, and, well, we had to leave town pretty quick after that. <laughs> Although we did pick up one new crewman. Called him Ole. Because after he played axe catching with Bjarki, he only had one ear. Made his hats look kind of funny. Well, anyway, you know, we decided we still didn't want to go on home. So we thought we'd go on down to Byzantium. Now, the problem is, though, of course, that the rivers going out of Novgorod don't go straight down to Byzantium. you got to portage across to a couple of others. And let me tell you, if you ain't never portage no longboat, that's an adventure all on its own. See, you pull your ship up onto the beach, and then you cut down some trees and make some logs. You shove the logs up under the front of the boat. Then you tie a rope under the front of the boat, and you pull it up on top of the logs. Now, you and some of the boys are pulling on the rope in the front, while other fellows are pushing on the boat in the back, and when the log goes out the back, you run it around to the front again. Yeah. So anyway, you know, we got the boat up on top of the logs, and most of us are out there pulling on the rope in the front. We got the berserks pushing on the boat in the back, and you know, that rope was awful slippery, so we let go of it to spit in our hands to get a better grip, and, uh, well, the berserks got an extra bath that year. <laughs> Lucky for us, we'd already locked up their axes in the sea chest before we got started, so they couldn't do much more than yell at us. But we finally managed to make it down there to Byzantium. But you know what, them Byzantines, they got no sense of humor. I mean, you pillage one village, and you burn one church, and the next thing you know, you got the whole bloody army chasing you around down there. Well, we let them around for a little while, and every once in a while slow down so they could catch up to us, and the berserks could work off their nerves in the back. But they finally got us cornered. Five thousand of them, two hundred of us. Had us up on top of this hill, surrounded on every side. Had us right where we wanted them. We just turned the berserks loose and had a party for a little vibe. But you know that Byzantine emperor, he got no more sense of humor than the rest of them does. He finally pulled everybody back, came out waving this big white flag around. We weren't exactly sure what that meant, but we figured we'd go out there and ask him. And he said, you know, boys, you're mighty impressive. How'd you like to come work for me and be my personal bodyguard? And we said, hey, you know, that sounds pretty good, but uh, what's the pay? And he said, well, if you come work for me, I'll give you all the beer you can drink, I'll give you all the food you can eat, I'll give you gold, I'll give you vermin. We said, hey, you know, that sounds pretty good, but uh, what if you don't want to take it? And he looked at us and he said, well, I can't afford to lose any more troops to you, so I'm just going to have to pull everybody back and shoot you full of arrows. We had to stop and think about that for a minute. Well, he said, boys, I've got to have an answer. <laughs> well, we drew up rank upon rank, shield upon shield. We raised our axes, we raised our spears. We looked him right in the eye and said, yeah, sure, you betcha. 